Let me ask about this entity that you call Sarah. Yes. I talk to myself about myself in third person sometimes. I don't know why. <laughs> uh, so maybe this is a good time to bring up consciousness. Sure. <laughs> it's been here all along. <laughs> well, has it? So well, I mean, that's at least in this conversation. I think I've been conscious most of it, but maybe I haven't. Well, yes. Yeah, speak. So speak for yourself. You're 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 projecting your consciousness onto me. You don't know if I'm conscious or not. Is no, I don't. Um, you're right. Is that uh, he talked about the physics of existence? He talked about the emergence of um, of causality. Uh, sorry, you talked about causality and time being fundamental to the universe. Where does consciousness fit into all of this? Like, uh, do you do you draw any kind of inspiration or value with the idea of panpsychism? That maybe one of the things that we ought to understand is the physics of consciousness. Like one of the missing pieces in the physics view of the world is understanding the physics of consciousness. Or like that word has so many concepts underneath it, but let's put it, on a, let's put consciousness as a label on a black box of mystery that we don't understand. Do you think that black box holds the key to uh, finally answering the question of the physics of life? The problems are absolutely related. I think um, most, and I'm interested in both because I'm just interested in what we are. And to me, the most interesting feature of what we are is our minds and the way they interact with other minds. Like minds are the most beautiful thing that exists in the universe. So how do they come to be? Um, so sorry to interrupt. So when you say we, you mean humans. I mean humans right now, but I but that's because I'm a human. Or but at least you, I think you, I am. You think there's something special to this particular? No, 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 um, no. Um, I don't, I'm not a human centric thinker. But are you one entity? You said a bunch of stuff came together to make a Sarah. Like, do, do you think oh, of yourself do, um, as one entity or are you just a bunch of different components? Like, is there any value to understand the physics of Sarah? Like, or are you just a bunch of different things that are like a nice little temporary side effect? That uh, you, yeah, you, you could think of me as a bundle of information that just yeah. became temporarily aggregated in a yeah, particular locally. individual. Yeah, yeah that's fine. I agree with that view. Um, <laughs> okay. I'll take that as a compliment, but, actually. But thanks. but you you but nevertheless, that bundle of information has become conscious, or yes. at least keeps calling herself conscious. Yeah, I think I'm conscious right now, but I might not be. But that's okay. Um, or you wouldn't know. Um, so yeah, so this is the problem. So yeah, usually people when they are talking about consciousness are worried about the subjective experience. And so I think that's why you're saying, I don't know if you're conscious because I don't know if you're experiencing right. this conversation right now. Um, and nor do you know if I'm experiencing the conversation right now. Um, and so this is why this is called the hard problem of consciousness because it seems impenetrable from the outside to know if something's having a conscious experience. Um, and I really like... Um, uh, the idea of also like the hard problem of matter, which is related to the hard problem of consciousness, which is you don't know the intrinsic properties of an electron not interacting, say, for example, with anything else in the universe. All the properties of anything that exists in the universe are defined by its interaction because you have to interact with it in order to be able to observe it. So we mm -hmm. can only actually know the things that are observable from the outside. And so this is one of the reasons that consciousness is hard for science because you're asking questions about something that's subjective and supposed to be intrinsic to what that thing is as it exists and how it feels about existing. Um and so I have thought a lot about this problem and its relationship to the problem of life. And the only thing I can come up with to try to make that problem scientifically tractable um, and also relate it to how I think about the physics of life is to ask the question, are there things that can only happen in the universe because there are physical systems that have subjective experience? So does subjective experience have different causes that things that it can cause to occur um, that would happen in the absence of that? I don't know the answer to that question, but I think that's a meaningful ask, way of asking the question of consciousness. I can't ask if you're having experience right now, but I can ask if you having experience right now changes something about you and the way you interact with the world. So uh, does stuff happen... It's a, it's a good question to ask, does stuff happen if consciousness is 
Perfect. Then it's a real physical thing, right? It has physical consequences. I'm a physicist. I'm biased. So I don't, you know, I can't get rid of that bias. It's really deeply ingrained. Um, <laughs> I've tried, <laughs> but it's hard. But I mean, you're saying information is physical too. So yeah. like virtual reality and simulation, all that program is physical too. In the sense yes, everything's it's... physical. It's just not physical the way it's represented in our minds. Right. So you... I love your Twitter. So you, you tweet <laughs> these like deep thoughts, <laughs> deep thoughts. That's what so. a theorist does when she's trying to experiment. <laughs> is tweet? Yes. It's just like sitting there. I mean, I could just imagine you sitting there for like hours and all of a sudden just like this thought comes out and we get a little um, like inkling into the thought process. Yeah, usually it's like when I'm running between things and I'm okay. like, I've had deep thoughts. Well, yeah. So you, deep thoughts are hard to articulate. One of the things you tweet is, ideologically, there are many parallels between the search for neural correlates of consciousness and for chemical correlates of life. How the neuroscience and astrobiology communities treat those correlates is entirely different. Can you elaborate against this kind of yeah, the parallels. It has to do a little bit with the consciousness and the and the and the matter thing you're talking about. Yeah, it does. And I I, I can't remember what state of mind I was when I was actually thinking about that. But um, but I think part of it is. So, but you never thought you're gonna have to analyze your own tweets. No, I didn't. It's you're, an interesting uh, historical juxtaposition of thinking. So so the yeah. tweet is a historical. Uh, Here is, you're doing an assembly experiment right now because yeah, exactly. you're bringing a thought from the past into the present and trying exactly. to actually in the lab. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This is this is experimental science right here. Okay, great. On the podcast live. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so so go. Let's see how the consciousness um, evolves on this one. Yeah. So um, in neuroscience, it's kind of accepted that we can't get at the subjective aspect of consciousness. So people are very interested in what would be a correlate of consciousness. So, um, so uh, What's a correlate? A correlate is a feature that relates to conscious activity. So for example, um, you know, a verbal report is a correlate of consciousness because, um, you know, I can tell you when I'm conscious. <laughs> And then when I'm sleeping, for example, I can't tell you I'm conscious. So we have this assumption that you're not conscious when you're sleeping and you're conscious when you're awake. Yeah. Um, and so so that's sort of like a, a very obvious example. But uh, neuroscientists, which, I, you know, I'm, I'm no neuroscientist and I'm not an expert in this field. So um, but, you know, they have very sophisticated ways of measuring, you know, activity in our brain and trying to relate that to verbal report and other proxies for whether someone is experiencing something. Um, and that's what is meant by neural correlates. Mm -hmm. um, and then so when people are trying to think about um, studying consciousness or developing theories for consciousness, they often are trying to build an experimental bridge to these neural correlates, recognizing the fact that a neural correlate may or may not correspond to consciousness because that problem's hard. Eh. And there's all these associated issues to it. So that that's from a neuroscience perspective, it's like fake it till you make it. So you pretty you, much, yeah. You fake whatever the correlates are, and <laughs> hopefully that the, the uh, that's going to uh, summon the thing that is consciousness. Yeah, so, something like that. And so the same thing on the chemical correlates of life is it, that sounds like that's an awesome concept. Is that something that people? No, I just made that up. Okay. That was original to that tweet. You can cite the tweet. Maybe I'll write it in a paper someday. <laughs> uh, chemical correlates of life. That's a good title. I mean, first of all, your your papers too that people should check out have great titles. Thank you. Or papers papers you're involved with. So your your tweets and titles are are stellar, and also your ideas. But the tweets and titles are much more important. Of uh, course. <laughs> so ideas will uh, live longer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're much more diffuse though. Um. Well, it's yeah. It's the Trojan. The tweet is the Trojan horse of the idea that that sticks yeah. around for a long time. Okay, so is there anything to say about the chemical correlates of life? You're saying there are similar kind of ways of thinking about it, but uh, you you mentioned about the communities. Yeah. So I think in astrobiology, it's not. Um, there's no concept of chemical correlates of life. We don't think about it that way. We think if we find molecules that are involved. In biology, we found life. So I think I, I, I think one of my motivations there was just to separate the fact that life has abstract properties associated to it. They become imprinted in in material substrates, 
Um, and those substrates are correlates for that thing, but they are not necessarily the thing we're actually looking for. The thing that we're looking for is the physics that's organizing that system to begin with, not the particular molecules. Um, in the same sense that, that you know, your consciousness is, is not your brain. <laughs> it's, 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 it, it's instantiated in your brain that, you know, it has to have a physical substrate, but it's not the, the matter is not the thing that you're looking at. It's some other, at least not in the way that we have come to look at matter, you know, with traditional physics and things, there's, there's something else there. And it, it might be this feature of history I was talking about our time being actually, you know, physically represented there. Do you think consciousness can be engineered? Yes. In the same way that life can be. Wow, that was a fast answer. I didn't even think about that. That's interesting. You don't have a free will. That was no. I do tough. have free will, but it's interesting because some. I, I mean, I you know you know. Now you're backtracking. No, no. I and do that was predestined. <laughs> yeah. No. No. Sorry. Um, no, I do believe in free will, but I also think that there's kind of kind of an interesting. Um, you know, like what you're you speaking about consciousness. What are you consciously aware of versus like what is your subconscious mm -hmm. brain actually processing and doing? And and sometimes there's conflict between your consciousness and your subconsciousness, or your consciousness is a little slower than your subconscious. And intuition is a really important feature of that. And so a lot of the ways I do my science is guided by intuition. Um, so when I give fast answers like that, I think it's usually because I haven't really thought about them, and therefore that's probably telling me something. 